graphics. They're needed in all of our apps and our websites, and yet it's hard to find really good graphics out there unless you make them yourself. And also if you're searching Google Images for graphics, you could be at risk for breaking copyright law if you use that inside of your commercial project. So in comes graphicstock.com. With a library of over 300,000 images, graphics, vectors, and photos that you can take and use inside of all of your commercial products, 100% royalty free, meaning you will never get sued for copyright infringement if you use these images, which is great. And while most royalty free websites actually make you pay for each individual image, that can get quite expensive. So with graphicstock.com, it's a $99 per year membership in which you can have unlimited downloads. But wait, there's more. Tell them what they want, Johnny. Now, if you wanna try out graphicstock.com, there is a seven day free trial link in the description down below that you can try out yourself in the which you can download up to 140 of their royalty free images. So you can use them in your future commercial projects as well after the trial ends. So go ahead and give it a shot today and a big shout out to them for sponsoring this video. Anyway, Anyway, onto the video. How's it going everybody? Jared here and today we're going to be working on how to load images inside of a scroll view so that you can scroll between each of those images. This is something that I'm using inside of the app that I'm working on right now so I thought I'd teach you guys how to do it as well. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so let's go ahead jump into Xcode 8 beta and this is where we're going to start our project. Yes, we are programming this in Swift 3. For this particular instance of loading images inside of the scroll view, there's not that big of a difference between Swift 2.3 and Swift 3, so you should be able to follow along pretty easily, but there is some big difference later on that I'll talk about. So let's go ahead and say create a new Xcode project. Uh, as you can see with Xcode 8, there's a few like cosmetic things. It's really all not that much different. I like the look of it now because iOS, watchOS, it's all just like right there. Very nice. So this is going to be iOS single view. Go ahead and click next. Our product name, I'm just going to go ahead and call mine my image scroll, but you can call this whatever you want. Language, Swift, devices, universal, and we're good to go. Now go ahead, click next and create. And inside of this, again, not too many things going on that are different between Xcode 8 and Xcode 7. Again, just little cosmetic things here and there. I think it has like a generally nicer look to it, but if we head into our main.storyboard, let's go ahead and start setting up our application. Now inside of here, this is one of the cosmetic things that you'll notice is that as I put on a scroll view, it just looks a little bit different. Like these background views, uh, the, these things that just go on in the background, they're a little bit fadier now, which is very nice because it doesn't get in the way with the rest of the things that you're trying to program. So that's nice that they faded out the UI scroll view. And that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead, take the scroll view. I'm going to go ahead, right click or control click and drag from that to my view. We're going to center vertically, center horizontally, equal widths and heights. And there we have it. So now our scroll view will now conform to that of our view. And also one thing you'll notice is that it didn't start off with the square, which is pretty amazing. I actually like that they started out with an iPhone view. Very nice. Okay, now let's go over here to our viewcontroller.swift. And there's a few differences here as well. Uh, you'll notice that there's like this blue line that lights up every time. It just makes it clear which line you're on. And I like that as well. But now let's go ahead and continue on. And I'm going to hook up my main.storyboard to my viewcontroller.swift. So I'm opening up my assistant editor so that we can right click or control click and drag from the scroll view over to our view like so. We're going to insert this as an outlet. And I'm just going to call this my main scroll view like so. And then connect. And another thing we want to do is I'm just going to go ahead and close that up that. Uh, assistant editor, we're going to head over here to our viewcontroller.swift and inside of here I'm going to create a new array. So I'm going to say var my image array will be equal to an array of images. So I'm going to just say open bracket, close bracket, and this will be a UI image. So again, an array, that's what these brackets are for right there, of UI images. And then after that, just go ahead, open close parentheses, and you're good to go. Now down here, instead of our view did load, let's go ahead and add some images into this. Now this is something special with Xcode 8, at least I didn't notice it in Xcode 7, that you can go ahead and say image array will be equal to open bracket, close bracket, and what with this is very cool. So you can go ahead and say image literal. Now you, 
this is perfect because what you can do right here is now as you can see I don't have any images inside of my assets.exe assets right here so let's go ahead and add those so I'm gonna just go ahead go over here to my assets.exe assets and click and drag those four images that I have right in there and now this is where the magic happens so you can go ahead go back over here to your view controller.swift and instead of having to like remember all these names that are going on inside of your assets I you can just go ahead go back over here to your viewcontroller.swift double click on that image literal that we saw and as you can see now you can add just an image from your assets right in there which is freaking amazing so it does sometimes glitch out it just like erased all the code for me so I'm gonna go ahead and delete that I'm gonna type in image literal again again this is beta so not everything's gonna be perfect so we can go ahead click on that first image and it's just gonna add that right in there and then now go ahead hit comma and then we can go ahead and add the other images that we have in there right in there and there you have it so this was actually the main difference between what I was showing you in Xcode 7 versus this now if you are in Xcode 7 the way you would just grab your images of course by saying UI image open parentheses and then you just get named uh, and then you type in the name of your image that is inside of your assets.exe assets that's a very welcome addition to Xcode 8 and also another thing I want to mention with these image literals is if you messed up your image, you can go ahead, double click on that, and you're able to actually pick your repick your image and pick the right one. But I picked the right image, so I'm going to continue on. And let's go ahead and add these onto image views inside of our scroll view. Now the way we do this is we're going to go ahead and say for i in zero dot dot less than our image array dot count open curly bracket, close curly bracket. So essentially what that for statement means is we created this new variable called i, and that's going to be this integer right here. So this starts out as zero, and then we're gonna go through our image array dot count, which of course is going to be equal to four. So we're cycling through all of those images. Now we are not cycling through zero dot dot four because that would actually mean zero to four in which that's actually five images. So you wanna keep that in mind. That's why we add that less than right there. And there you have it. So that's why we have four i and zero dot dot less than our image array dot count. And then now we can go ahead, continue on, and with this i value, we're gonna grab our images properly. So first off, let's go ahead and create an image view. So I'm gonna say let my image view equal a UI image view, open close parentheses. And then now we can go ahead and say our image view dot image will be equal to that of our image array for the index path so we're going to go ahead and say open bracket close bracket and just put in our i value so as we're cycling through all these images we say zero so as i is zero we're going to pick this image if i is one we're going to pick it this image and so on and so forth and we're just cycling through all these images now we can go ahead continue on and let's add these properly onto our scene so we're going to say our image view dot frame will be equal to and we're going to set this equal to a cg rect open parentheses, x, y, width, and height, this one right here. So we'll want to set the x value, the y value, the width, and the height. Now the way we determine the x value is a little bit special because we are using that uh, scroll view. So we're going to go ahead and say let our x position will be equal to, and we're going to set this equal to our self.view.frame.width, and we're going to multiply this by our value of i. So as we're cycling through all of these, we have i, in which this is going to be zero. So when it is zero, we, we want that X position to be zero because we want it to be all the way over to the left of the scene and so on and so forth with the rest of them. So we have one in which it's going to put it over to the right side of the screen. And again, just put them right in the proper place. So self.view.frame.width, multiply that by the value of I. Now, as you can see, we're getting this error right now. If we click on that error right over here, we say that the binary operator cannot operate between CG float and integer. So you could choose either route. If you want to turn this into a CG float, you just say CG float open parentheses and close parentheses, and you're good to go. If you also want to go the other route, you can go ahead and put that as an integer and it would have the exact same effect. I think I'm gonna do that just because it's a little bit cleaner than CG float. So I'm gonna put integer there and we're good to go. Now we can go ahead and down here and we have our image view dot frame, our X value. We're gonna set this equal to our X position that we just created. And this Y value, we're gonna set this equal to zero. So with the position of, so with the Y 
So with the Y position of zero, that's actually gonna put it right in the top left corner of the scene, which is exactly where we want it. Now with the width of this image view, I want this to just fill the view that it's supposed to fill. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this equal to myself dot view dot frame dot width. And that's gonna be the size of each of these images that are going on there. Now for the height right here, we want this, I'm just gonna make it so it fills the whole scene. So I'm gonna set this equal to myself dot view dot frame dot height. Now for the width and the height right here, you want to keep in mind like this is, I'm, I'm setting this equal to myself dot view. So this is for just filling the whole view. Now if you want your scroll view to be smaller, you would actually say this is equal to yourself dot scroll view uh, or your main scroll view dot frame dot width and do the same down here uh, for your main scroll view. You want to make sure that it's filling the whole scroll view uh, rather than and conforming to that scroll view rather than your view. Otherwise you get your images formatting weirdly. So just keep that in mind. So now let's go ahead and I'm actually gonna keep that. So I'm actually gonna keep that as myself dot main scroll you scroll view width and height. So just keep that as such. Now right here we're still getting this error and this is because of what I did earlier, which is wrong. So I didn't realize this, but with the X position right here, it's expecting this to be a CG float. So you wanna make sure that that's done properly. So just go ahead, delete that integer self.view.frame.width and we can go ahead and multiply that by our CG float value right here and close those parentheses like so. And now we converted that I value into a CG float rather than having it all an integer. And we're good to go there. Now the next thing we need to do is adjust this accordingly with our scroll view. So with our scroll view, it doesn't really realize that all these images are being added in here and that it should conform appropriately. So we need to conform it ourselves. So the way we do this is by going ahead and saying our scroll view or our main scroll view dot, and this will be our content size dot width will be equal to that of, will be equal to that of our main scroll view dot frame dot width. And we're gonna multiply this by our I value plus one. Uh, this I value, we don't wanna multiply it by zero. So it's gonna be, one, two, three, four. That's where we want to actually multiply it by. So just keep that in mind. So I plus one, that way we actually hit that four value and we're getting this done properly. So times I plus one, go ahead, put those in parentheses if you want to make sure that those are called together. And also another thing that it's giving me, CG float and integer, go ahead and change that to change your I value to a CG float. And we already have those in parentheses, so we're good to go. And then now, lastly, let's go ahead and add this image view onto our main scroll view. So we're, so we're gonna go ahead and say our main scroll view dot add sub view, and we're going to add the sub view of our image view. Now let's go ahead, build and run this, and let's see what we have created. We created a monster. No! And there you have it. So I loaded these images onto the scene, but as you can see, uh, things are weird. So let's go ahead and fix that by going over here. And the way we do this is by going ahead and what we're doing with our image right here, we have our image view dot, and this is our content mode that we're gonna be switching. So we're gonna set our content mode equal to dot, and then you can say bottom, right, redraw, right, top, left, scale to fill. This is what it's on right now. This is the thing that's automatically on there. And that is why we are getting this weird uh, thing going on right now. So let's go ahead and fix that by going ahead and saying dot content mode will be equal to dot uh, scale aspect fit. So we're gonna make sure it fits properly. Now let's go ahead and build around this. Now even after doing this, the images are still a little bit weird and the way we fix this is by going over here to our image view dot frame and it looks like we have our self dot main scroll view dot frame dot width. Now with this, we didn't really get our main scroll view dot frame dot width properly done. So now the way we fix that is by going up here to the top of our view did load, and we're just gonna go ahead and say our main scroll view dot frame will be equal to that of our view dot frame. And now if we were to build and run this, we should have it so that everything works properly. Let's, I think this is probably a bug with Xcode 8, but uh, because it should have normally just conformed to the screen size because I did set those inside of my main dot storyboard over here, but apparently it didn't work. So 
Either way, here we have it. So now I have my scroll view, and here are the images, the wonderful images, loaded up inside of the scroll view. Now another thing I want to do is, right now you can just like scroll through all of them, and that's cool, but it's not exactly like user friendly. So let's go ahead, click on our scroll view inside of our main.storyboard, and we're going to go over here to the attributes inspector, and just say paging enabled. And now, also if you want, you can go ahead and just uh, turn off these shows horizontal and vertical indicators. And let's go ahead and build and run this and check it out. And there you have it. So now as I scroll through this, you'll get this cool paging thing rather than you having like a weird scroll effect going on. It actually pages through all of the images and it looks quite nice. And there you have it. So that's how you load images inside of your scroll view using Xcode 8. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit that like button down below. If you want to see more videos like this from me in the future, be sure to subscribe. Let me know what you thought of the ad in the beginning. This is my first sponsor, so I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, let me know what you thought. Don't hate on it. It's how do I make my living, and I have to do these ads in order to do these videos. Also, let me know what kind of Swift 3 content you would like me to get into, and I'll be sure to do it. Anyway, have a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.